Let me guess, you clicked on this video because you've been struggling on the seemingly impossible questions on Math Module 2 of the SAT. But don't worry, most people feel the exact same way. On this channel, I've helped tens of thousands of students master the SAT. So in today's video, I'm going to be going over 5 more hard Math Module 2 questions on the SAT. Before we move on, make sure to subscribe as over 98% of you are not subscribed. Now let's go to the first question. A rectangle is inscribed in a circle, such that each vertex of the rectangle lies on the circumference of the circle. The diagonal of the rectangle is twice the length of the shortest side of the rectangle. The area of the rectangle is 1089 root 3 square units. What is the length in units of the diameter of the circle? First, let's try to visualize what they're saying. So, when a rectangle is inscribed in a circle, that means that the rectangle is drawn inside of the circle. And it would be drawn like this. Now, let's label the sides. So it says that the diagonal of the rectangle is twice the length of the shortest side of the rectangle. So we can label the shortest side x. The diagonal would be 2x, since it is twice the length. Immediately, we know that it's a right angle, right? Specifically, a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Let's label our angles, and then we can write the length of each side. And because it is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, we know that the bottom side is x root 3. So we know all of these sides, but now how do we find the diameter of the circle? So the first step is to solve for x. And we're given the area of the rectangle, so we can multiply x by x root 3, which are both sides of the rectangle, and we get the area of 1089 root 3. That simplifies into x squared is equal to 1089. So we take the square root of both sides and we get x is equal to 33. And since we know that the diameter is just 2x, we multiply by 2 and get 66 as our answer. Now let's move on to question number 2. A circle has center G, and points M and N lie on the circle. Line segments MH and NH are tangent to the circle at points M and N, respectively. If the radius of the circle is 168 millimeters and the perimeter of the quadrilateral GM and HN is 3856 millimeters, what is the distance in millimeters between points G and H? So first, let's draw the circle, and with the center G. And we can label our points M and N, which lie on the outside of the circle. And then let's draw the lines that connect them to the center G. And then we can draw the tangent lines that intersect at point H. So first, GM and GN are equal because they're both radiuses of the circle. And MH and NH are also equal since they are tangent lines, we know that they are perpendicular to the radius lines. So we know that they make two right triangles. So to find x, we know the perimeter, which is 3,856, and we know the radius, so we do 2 times the radius plus 2 times x. And we find that x is equal to 1,760. So now all we have to do to find the distance uh, between g and h, we just need to use Pythagorean theorem. So we take r squared plus x squared equals d squared, which is the distance. And we get that d is equal to 1,768. Now let's move on to question number three. In a set of four consecutive odd integers, where the integers are ordered from least to greatest, the first integer is represented by x. The product of 12 and the fourth odd integer is at most 26 less than the sum of the first and the third odd integer. Which inequality represents this situation? Sounds confusing, but it's actually pretty simple. So the first integer is x. So the next odd integer would be if we added 2 to x, right? So then the third odd integer would be x plus 4. And then for the fourth odd integer, it would be x plus 6. Okay, and then it says the product of 12 and the fourth integer is at most 26 less than the sum of the first and the third odd integer. So we write 12 times x plus 6 is less than or equal to x plus x plus 4. And since it says it's at most 26 less, A is the answer. If you've made it this far, make sure to like and subscribe. Now let's move on to question number four. The given equation relates the positive variable P, Q, R, and S. Which of the following is equivalent to Q? So our first step is to multiply this equation by 
the variable q. After we do this, we're going to multiply the equation again by each of the following variables. So once we've multiplied it by q, then we'll multiply it by p, and then we'll multiply it by r, and then by s. So when we end up multiplying this equation by every single variable, we end up getting 20qrs plus 20qps plus 20qpr is equal to 20prs. Now we can simplify this down into q times rs plus ps plus pr equals prs. Now we isolate q and we get prs over rs plus ps plus pr and that's equivalent to c. Now let's move on to the final question. This question actually comes from Cracked's new challenge mode where they developed multiple questions that are on par with Math Module 2. On top of that, Cracked also has one-on-one -on -one tutoring with top scores and mock exams for you to practice with. If you're interested, I've left a link in the description down below if you want to check them out. Triangle ABC is drawn within circle C of radius R such that points A and B lie on the circle and connect to the circle center. The distance between A and B is R and the area of the triangle is 4. What is the ratio of the measure of arc length of AB in degrees to the square of the length of BC? First, let's draw the circle, and then let's label our point C as the center, point B that lies on the circle, and point A. Next, let's draw the lines connecting A and B to the center, and the length of AB. So it tells us that the length between AB is R, so we know that this is an equilateral triangle since all the sides are equal to each other. And they also give us the area, which is 4. This will make solving for the radius much easier. Next, we can divide the equilateral triangle into two right triangles. And this makes two 30, 60, 90 triangles. Since each angle of the equilateral triangle is equal to 60 degrees. So the hypotenuse would be equal to R. And since we split the equilateral triangle in half, the side length would be R over 2 for that side. And because it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle, we know that the length of the bottom is equal to root 3, r over 2. So now the next step is to use the radius which is given to us, which is 4. And then we know that the area is just two of these triangles. So we would just multiply r squared times root 3, r over 2. And that simplifies down into 16 equals r squared root 3. And then that becomes r squared equals 16 divided by root 3. So the next thing we need to find is the square of the length of BC. Well, we know that the length of BC on its own is just r. So the square of BC would just be equal to 16 over root 3. And then the arc length of AB in degrees is just... 60 degrees because it's an equilateral triangle and the angle of C is equal to 60 degrees. So to get the ratio, we divide 60 by 16 over root 3 and we end up getting 15 root 3 over 4, which is equal to B. If you thought this video was helpful, let me know in the comments down below and make sure to click the link in my description to check out Cracked It. If you want more videos from me, make sure to subscribe and watch these recommended videos from my channel.